what helped me a lot. So if you're in this stage where you kind of feel like you got to take over the world and change everybody's mind immediately, it's healthy to, to read history at times and understand mm-hmm. that you're not the first one that's uh, taken up this mantle and, yeah. and mm-hmm. this mission. And that it's not, it's the, this, this, just hear me out here. It's not one or two or three conversations. I, I have to say this to people all the time. Yeah. Multiple times in scripture, we are commanded, not suggested, we are commanded to speak the truth in love. And love, if you understand the word, it is selfless, sacrificial, and it is long suffering. That's how it's described, which means you're going to have to be extremely patient yeah. over and over and over again. And be okay with people not changing right away because that's what love does. Love endures, right? Mm -hmm. So it's understanding that this is a journey. I've rarely met anybody who hasn't had a little bit of a traumatic experience coming to grace, right? Mm -hmm. And so I often tell people, just be there for that person when they get there. It might be a slow fade where they slowly come over here, or it might be something where you're there to help pick up the pieces after the tragedy. And mm. but the, what, what does Paul say in Romans 15, 1? Those of you who are, who are strong in grace, in faith, have an obligation to deal with the failings of the weak. And he says obligation. That's another way of saying speaking the truth in love. So mm. I always just encourage, I have a lot of spouses who one or the other will be either entrenched yes. in. Yeah. Yeah, they'll that, be I was going to mention that seems to be the common thing is it's yeah. between couples. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. And it's, you know, for my church, it's been a lot of charismatic theology that one spouse has come out of and the other one is still in it. And um, I, I had guys in my church that I could see their, you know, their teeth clench when I told them, hey, brother, the one thing you're going to hear me say for the rest of your marriage is you got to be patient. You got to let yeah. God do his work because if they don't see it then you can't force it upon him. And so I I think that command from our Lord is so important that love is always the vehicle that this grace has to come to people because you cannot force it upon them. All three of us have tried it and it's blown up. It doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm not going to repeat everything that John said, though I agree with it all. I think some other things to keep in mind when you're encountering these things is to, to first remember the nature of the gospel and and the fact that we are recipients of mercy. And so mm. what do we have that we've not been given? And so that should humble us all. Mm. I agree with John's encouragement to read history and and also humble yourself to realize that you are not the first human being to thoughtfully engage these things. That's right. That yeah. people have thought really hard for a long time and have even given their lives to these these truths and and so that should calm us all down a little bit and remember you know that if if we're talking about if we're getting all of it worked up and indignant we're typically dealing in the realm of of like justice and what people deserve and I'm going to treat you poorly because you have spoken things to me or you've not said things to me that have been helpful and just we should all remember that if we're dealing in the realm of what we deserve uh, we don't deserve anything good from the Lord as sinners. And Christianity is a religion of mercy and mercy mm-hmm. is better than fair. Right. And so mm-hmm. just remember those things. I, I think that should humble us all. But then I, I think that our theology, understanding how the fall of Adam has wrecked us all mm-hmm. and how that means that by nature, we don't understand anything well, yeah. uh, that should produce compassion mm-hmm. um, because there were so many things that we didn't understand for a time, though we, I think, wanted to understand. We didn't. Uh, We meant well in what we were trying to do. So I think extend compassion toward your brothers and sisters and don't Mm. impugn their motivations. Mm. Uh, Assume that they mean really well, but they might be misguided. And so then ask yourself, what is actually going to be fruitful and winsome and useful? Well, it's for me to be kind and warm and gentle. And I always encourage people in our church because all of our people are coming from context. Well, not all, but many of our people are coming from contexts that are different. They're coming yeah. from a, a more generally evangelical background. And a lot of these things that we're talking about, the, the nature of the gospel and how Christ's work is objective and outside of us. And mm-hmm. though they agree with that generally, they've never been taught that really well, or the distinction between the law and the gospel, uh, and yes. that there is nothing whatsoever in the gospel for us to do. That makes people really nervous and they're having to learn all these things. But when the light bulbs go off, people are disoriented and they're kind of like, what do I do with this? Uh, yeah. And I always encourage people in our church, 
if you are understanding these things and you're interacting with people that are newer, that don't yet understand them, just major on Jesus. Talk about him a lot. Like point people to Christ and talk about how he is such a mighty, sufficient savior and just make much of Christ all the time and let that be your song and let that be your line rather than getting all worked up over these other areas of doctrine that are important but yeah. might actually distract from the main yes. conversation we're trying to have. So yeah. I, I think that's generally useful. And yeah. I've, I try to do that myself whenever I'm having conversations with people that understand that where I am theologically and where they are theologically is different. Mm -hmm. And they're a little bit nervous about where I am. I'm, mm -hmm. I just talk about Christ a lot and say yeah. things about Jesus that I don't think they can disagree with. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we that's... just reason from there. I, that's such great advice because it's like you can pull out your um, confessions or, you know, sure. for us or Book and of they're Concord. Sure. But yeah, yeah, it's useful. But for yeah. a lot of people, they're like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. Right. I'm not super interested in that. Right. Yeah. Don't make don't make a law of the gospel is so yeah, amen. important. And but it's harder to do than I think we realize. So this has all been this is great advice and super helpful.